All right, AOE cap has been removed. Ish. Now those abilities will uh, will do reduced damage beyond five targets. So look, in terms of balance, it may end up being kind of similar, but in terms of game feel, like your abilities will do damage. And that will mean if you go and you're doing a farm raid or something, and there's 20 mobs in front of you and you do a frost scythe, it's probably going to kill all of them. And that's what a lot of players want. So this should achieve still most of their design goals behind the AoE cap while just having game feel be preserved. So... Uh, you know, maybe this isn't exactly what everybody would want, but I think it's definitely a move in the right direction. Though it is a move that will very much uh, depend on balance, right? Because, you know, if it's tuned such that it only tickles target six or target seven, then maybe it won't feel that good. So we'll just need to see how the balance um, comes out. Legendary scrapping. Simple. 100% Soul Ash and Soul Cinder's refund. Kind of nice. This was another one of the things that was in my, uh, you know, 36 changes we want in 9.1.5. So I'm very glad that this uh, this has actually made it in. Um, yeah. And this just means, you know, whenever you earn Soul Ash, you're not thinking, well, if I have to remake this legendary, the Soul Ash I earned meant nothing, right? All the Soul Ash you earn your character will be Soul Ash on your character because if you do need to regrep, you don't lose it, right? So that's great. Great, great, great. Uh, and then also the drop rates for the legendary recipes are 100% on uh, any difficulty, which again, I think is the right move to make. And then also Legion time walking. The TLDR here basically is it's time walking in Legion. You know, it's got its own set of affixes and the gear is just like Mythic Plus gear in the Shadowlands expansion. Now your Great Vault will not contain Legion time walking gear, but your Legion time walking Mythic Plus will contribute to your Great Vault progress. So overall, really good stuff just makes sense to make use of that content improved group finder then um just a few changes like you know what we said about the authenticator also you can search within a range which should be handy for mythic plus key levels and ratings um auto filling the group finder information based on your keystone group creators can set minimum mythic plus or pvp rating requirements and group creators can select a play style which we kind of touched on earlier for threads of fate then you're gonna have some feedback because you checked this out in ptr this morning oh, yes. but yeah uh torgast has a daily quest for xp and soul ash there's a pvp battleground daily quest for gear and xp also the bonus objectives and zone objectives well the bonus objective is shorter by a good bit and they reward renown which is great and then the zone objectives give more gear uh well gear at a higher item level even um and anima so that's also quite good mm. Hair colors we've already covered in today's stream. Also, more gradations for uh, the rated PvP gear. It's now at every 200 rating and three item level. So that's pretty good for the yep. people progressing. <laughs> also, and the honor gear <laughs> is now mm. more useful. So, fully ranked up honor gear at rank six will be eye level 233 in PvP, which is the same as unranked conquest gear. And that should mean that you'll be able to grind out some honor and be at a better standing to start off your pvp journey you were gonna say something yep i was just going to say that uh it uh, until this patch ships do not trust any of the numbers that they've given for the uh, item level and stuff because so i think they've changed them either twice or three times already oh okay <laughs> so they're they're very much in the in the sort of uh we're rapidly tuning everything as we go phase of this so far so and then for uh, for quality of life uh, legacy loot mode for BFA dungeons and raids. So if you and two people go in and clear Desire Lore, you will get a full raid's worth of loot, not just personal loot for two people. Uh, there's heirloom scouting maps for alts for all expansions. So, you know, you use those. And when you use those, you get a, um, you know, you get a full set of flight points being uh, unlocked for your character. And your map explored. Yeah. Um, only five players are needed for normal warfronts. Then they have some uh, UI and accessibility changes. So they've updated the requirements to uh, participate in the newcomer guide system. Players can opt in after completing 3,000 quests and reaching max level. There is better gamepad compatibility, including support for touchpad and gyro. So that's fairly interesting. I wonder how that works. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, touchpad, that would be like the touchpad on the PS5 controller. That's, you know, up in, up in the middle. Uh, Mythic Plus and PvP ratings can be shared through a chat link with shift click. Sounds the cool. um, item upgrade UI has been reworked. And it's pretty nice too. I will say that. Yeah, it's a lot better. Uh, then people who report things will get a message whenever the report results in an action. 
and then offenders will receive a message of any current and future penalties if their behavior is not corrected. Uh, Text-to-speech settings saved on server now, and they've added an option to save the settings account wide. And there's an option to add voice transcription output to any chat frame and to change the font color of the chat frame. And then also weather effects in Storm and Norgamar, which I need to check out for sure. That's and one that's... thing I forgot to check out this morning, sadly, because I heard some good things about them. Oh, nice. I'll be, I'll be lovely, especially when it's winter and it gets all cozy. 